So in a previous video, we tested two-stroke oil and a four-stroke engine. What we did was we added the two-stroke pre-mix fuel to the gas tank of a four-stroke engine and ran it for a while. No sort of issues took place. The engine ran fine, maybe a little bit more carbon build up on the spark plug, maybe a little bit more engine smoke, but not a whole lot. All in all, it seemed to do just fine. But what would happen if we take a four-stroke oil and add it to the fuel and then add it to the gas tank of a two-stroke engine? Is the four-stroke oil going to properly mix with the gasoline or will it settle to the bottom? What's gonna to happen to the engine? Is the engine gonna run warmer? Is there gonna be adequate lubrication? What's gonna happen regarding the film strength of the four-stroke oil compared to the two-stroke oil? Does four-stroke oil have better or worse film strength? All sorts of questions, not a whole lot of answers yet. So let's go and get the testing underway and see what's gonna happen. So today we're gonna to mix four-stroke oil with gasoline to see if it settles to the bottom or if it mixes. Rod's gonna run four-stroke oil in this two-stroke engine for a solid hour to see what happens. So the first test we're gonna do is to see how well four-stroke oil mixes in gasoline. So I'm gonna go ahead and add gasoline to three different jars. I'm gonna mix two-stroke oil in one, four-stroke conventional, and four-stroke synthetic. So to see how well gasoline blends with two-stroke oil for, and as well as a four-stroke oil, what I'm gonna do is use a tablespoon, drop an entire tablespoon of two-stroke and four-stroke oil into each one of these containers. So I've not stirred the two-stroke oil. The instructions say you're supposed to stir, but I just wanted to demonstrate that the two-stroke oil doesn't mix very well unless it's stirred. As you can see, the two-stroke oil blends with the gasoline very easily once it's stirred. Next, we're going to see how Mobile One Full Synthetic does mixing with gasoline. Very much like the two-stroke oil, the four-stroke oil Full Synthetic did not mix with gasoline on its own. It's going to require a little bit of stirring, so I'm going to stir it and see how it does. Next, we're going to see how conventional 10W30 mixes with gasoline. So the conventional motor oil, the color of it is very close to that of gasoline. Looking carefully, I can see that some of it has settled at the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and see how well it mixes. What we do is come back in an hour to see if the oil has settled to the bottom or if it stays mixed. Okay, it's been a couple hours. It looks like the oil is staying mixed within the gasoline. So the first engine we'll be using for the first test includes a little two-stroke Briggs & Stratton engine that came off a snowblower. Obviously, a snowblower setup is not very ideal for demonstration purposes, so I went ahead and pulled the engine off and put it on this old frame that went to a pressure washer. The first thing I'm going to do is take a look inside the cylinder. I'm not going to pop the cylinder head off because that would require dismantling this entire engine. So I'm going to take a look inside the engine using a boroscope. We're going to establish our baseline using two-stroke oil and the two-stroke engine. I'm going to add one ounce of this Echo two-stroke oil. This is specifically designed for an air-cooled engine. I'm going to use some 10W30 conventional motor oil. I'm going to use one ounce for 32 ounces of gasoline.
So a while back I did a two-stroke bike build, and this bike kit's been pretty fun to use. The only thing I did different since then is I took off this chain tensioner. This chain tensioner, unfortunately, is a very poor design, and from a lot of comments folks left on the YouTube channel, people said the problem they had was the chain tensioner would somehow rotate into the spokes. It would loosen up, go into the spokes, and cause a bike wreck. So what I decided to do was just go ahead and loosen up the back sprocket and move the entire wheel back until the chain tension was just right. Th there's a lot less noise, everything's a lot smoother, so this is something to consider if you have one of these little bike kits. What I'm going to do is go ahead and pop the cylinder head off of this engine, take a look at the cylinder wall, then we're going to run some four-stroke engine oil through it for about an hour and then see what it looks like. This is what the cylinder cap looks like after several hours of use. You can see there's a little bit of carbon buildup. The spark plug looks like it has a little bit of carbon buildup as well, but all in all, not too bad. So it's been 24 hours since we pre-mixed the four-stroke oil with the gasoline. And as you can see, there isn't any sort of separation that's taken place. The two-stroke oil has remained mixed as we would expect. From the research I've done, four-stroke oil that's pre-mixed with gas can actually gum up over time. So this is just a 24-hour look. I think if we came back in a couple of months, we might see a different outcome. Four-stroke oil and a two-stroke engine. I wasn't exactly sure what was going to happen. I thought we might see more issues with the engine as far as the amount of scoring on the cylinder wall or with the engine heating up, but there did not seem to be any sort of side effects for using four-stroke oil. Now, with all that being said, it is a short-term test. I do not recommend using four-stroke oil and a two-stroke engine just because two-stroke oil isn't all that much more expensive and it's specifically designed for a two-stroke engine. The problem with four-stroke oil, it can gum up over time, so you really don't want to use four-stroke oil unless it's an emergency. Anyway, I had a lot of fun doing this video. I had lots of people request it, so keep those recommendations coming, and I'll keep making videos. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. Please take care, and I look forward to seeing you next time.